Hi, freaky friends. It's Colleen here. Your cousin's weird solo. Just doing an introduction to our special Halloween episode. Woo! So excited. We had the honor and pleasure of being invited to be the host of Haunted Happy Hour at the Watertown Historical or the Jefferson County Historical Society here in Watertown. Um, we had a lot of people come out and share some really cool ghost stories with us um, from local to other states from their growing up. But it was just really cool to hear everyone's stories that night. Um, the historical society is definitely haunted. Um, Olive Paddock herself has been seen in the windows, on the stairs, um, in the house, and she may have made an appearance that night. We definitely did have some microphone interference when people are talking, and you're going to hear that throughout the episode. Um, and I kept it in there because, you know, she wanted to make her appearance somehow, and she did that. So sit back and hear some local ghost stories from some really cool people that showed up that night. My name is Susie Renzi Felt. I'm the Vice President of the Jefferson County Historical Society and the Events Coordinator. And I'm very honored to have our hosts, the Cousins Beard Podcasters, tonight. They are going to re be recording your ghost stories and folk tales. Um, Colleen is going to talk to you a little bit about their podcast. Uh, but I thought to kick things off, maybe I would tell you some ghost stories myself. So, my in my other life. I am the library director across the street at Flower Library, and I'm sure that you know that we're a pretty haunted library, or maybe you didn't know that. Um, and I'm looking because my friend Derek is here, and he uh, had just finished a ghost investigation at the library where we caught all new information. Hopefully Derek has good stories to tell later. I'm calling right out on the spot. <laughs> but one of my favorite ghost stories is of we have Victorian dolls in our basement, a very old collection. Um, they were Emma Flower Taylor's. She is a local lady. She actually uh, gave the money to build the library. So it's her personal collection that she collected her whole life from all over the world. Anytime she traveled, anytime her dad traveled, she got a doll. I mean, we have corn house dolls, we have porcelain dolls, we have cloth dolls. We have dolls with human hair attached to them because I'm sure you know that that was very much something that they did when um, a child died. A lot of times they would cut the hair off and make a doll in the likeness of the child who died. And so we have some of those dolls on display. <laughs> and unfortunately, it seems that there might be a spirit attached to one or more of the dolls because one of the most common things that we are told is in the basement, people can feel, hear, and sometimes see, like a flicker out of their eye, children running around the basement. Now we've had contractors come in before the library opens to do work down there, and they think they're the only people in the building, they're, and they're wondering why they're hearing running up and down the aisles, running up and down the aisles on the book stacks. And it's a, it's a concrete floor, so you can't hear a lot. Uh, they also hear giggling. They'll see shadows out of the corner of their eyes. I can't tell you how many times I've come in to work, come down the driveway, and the contractors are just standing out by their car. They're like, we are not going back in until more people are in the building. <laughs> because there's these little, little spirits that are in the basement quite often. That's my favorite one to tell, the scary dolls. The dolls terrify me. Let's be honest. I was down there one time, and one of the dolls, oh, it fell. <laughs> it fell. And uh, I was frozen in place. I was so scared that the doll fell over. There was no reason for it to fall over. You can't jiggle the case in any way. You can't jump up and down and make the dolls move. The doll just fell. Did it have the real hair? <laughs> the one that fell, uh, did not have real hair. It was a little Scottish one, but if you go down and look at the collection, you'll see how frightening they are. They're frightening. <laughs> Clearly, I have a fear of dolls, so. <laughs> I have another story to tell. This one is a more personal story. It's not even my own story. It's a story that my sister and my mom used to tell me when my, my sister who's seven years older than me, so I don't even think I was born at the time when this was happening. 
we lived on the north side of the city, right on Phelps Street, actually, and we had a very nice elderly man as a neighbor, and he would walk by. Does anybody remember the red and white crescents mm -hmm. that used to be there? It's now Papatino's. Yeah. So that was our little north side corner store. So this sweet little old man would have his hand cart, his little hand cart, and he'd walk over to the red and white every morning, do whatever he did at the red and white, probably got a coffee or something. And when he would walk back and my sister was playing on the porch, he would wave to her and say, good morning. Well, he had been doing this for forever. And um, turns out he'd been dead in his house for about four days, but was still walking by my sister every morning saying, good morning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And so nobody lived in his house forever and ever and ever. And we, we were just convinced that it was because his spirit was still in that house. I think it's now occupied. I don't know. But yeah. Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for listening. You can all hear me, right? Uh, so my name is Colleen. My, my other weird cousin is on her way. She's, she's the late cousin. I'm the on-time cousin. Um, <laughs> she's probably putting makeup on to make herself look real pretty. Uh, so I'm so excited to be here tonight. Um, I don't know if you saw, but we're in the front page of the Laura and Daily Times today. Yeah. Ooh, pretty fancy. Um, but we have, we're a, a local podcast. We started two years ago. Um, and we talk about the bizarre, spooky things throughout history. It's not always local, but we do local. We interviewed Susie at the library. We've done the, the cider mill um, last, two Halloweens ago. That was our Halloween special. And tonight, you get to be our Halloween special if you come up and share something, if you're cool with it. If you don't want me to, I don't have to. But you do, you will if you come up and get us a magnet. <laughs> and you can put it on your car or your refrigerator. It's pretty fancy. Um, we might have like seven at our house, but... Uh, so our podcast, like I said, we, we try to release twice a week. Um, that doesn't always happen because we're working women and we work 40 hours a week. Plus Margaret has little ones at home. Mine's an adult man. So I don't, it doesn't bother me. I mean, that bothers me, but he doesn't need me anymore. Um, she, she has two tiny ones and an adult in her house too. So, um, sometimes we don't get 12 a week, but when we do, there she is. The late cousin's weird. <laughs> I said you were probably making yourself feel pretty. Yeah, I was trying. <laughs> so um, we try to do, we do a regular episode. Our regular episodes are usually like 45 minutes or so. Um, and they talk about like hauntings, cursed mummies, weird <laughs> things in history. And then we have another one that we release on um, third. Well, I shouldn't say Thursday. So it's never, we, we're really chaotic. <laughs> um, Another one we released the week, it's a terrible trend. So that could be medical trends, fashion trends. Like, I did a whole thing on funeral trends in the Victorian. So this is like, we have a whole episode about what's going on in this room right now. <laughs> with the hair art and jewelry and the clothing and how long women had to wear clothing. And how there was no rules for men, but women had all the rules. Like, what? Which is, okay. you know, we know that. <laughs> we know that's the thing. Um, finding. That yeah, we run. That <laughs> she likes to find things that'll gross me out. I hate snakes and feet, so she tries real hard to get. <laughs> and I did a snake oil one too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So um, we do a terrible trend. Did you do wooden bathing suits? One we time? did do yes, wooden bathing suits, and they were called the Spruce Girls, the original OG Spruce. Yeah, Monsters. they weren't the Spice Girls. They were the Spruce Girls, <laughs> and they were a little. And it was actually cute. They were cute. They it were. Was, I was. I would wear them. Yeah. Made of wood laminate. Like they were really, really cool looking, but looked very impractical and uncomfortable. Yeah, <laughs> but they were cute. They looked good in pictures, and really, sometimes that's all that matters because right. that's what's captured for history, right? Um, so we do those. We do two episodes a week. Um, we've had both. Each of us had COVID at different times, three times. So that's six times where we weren't recording because we were sick or more because I've had kids that had. COVID yes, that yes. So, two. Yeah, so it's just never ending and. And so that we try to get two out a week, so but it doesn't always happen. But we're on every platform that there is. So um, Apple, Amazon, Spotify, iHeartRadio, I don't know, all of them are out there everywhere. So, you know, you can find us anywhere you listen to podcasts. And um, we try to be regular, but if we're not, you'll, you get it. You all have lives and you know what happens. It doesn't always happen, but we do our best. 
we're going to share a little story. Do you want to share our story? Sure. Okay. You did the background. I did the background. And they talked about it a little bit on the paper. If you, I told them we're on the front page of the paper. I know. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> Uh, we were I, I went to Stewart's and I bought one. I'm like, oh my god, look, it's me. I'm a fan. <laughs> She's like, what? I go, that's me. I'm wearing the same shirt. <laughs> so we're going to talk to you about the Jefferson County Farm School or the Cupertino Friary. Anyone know where this is or heard of it before? Okay, this is located on. I'll tell you the exact address so you can go put it in your maps now, and then you can go visit it. It's one seven zero or one don't seven go on zero. The property because they don't like that. They don't like that. But you can drive by. Yeah. One seven zero three seven Sandy Creek Valley Road. So. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. 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 Yeah. It was actually called the Farm School then. Yeah. Um, it was uh built in the early nineteenth century, and it was their way to deal with uh truancy and local schools. And young boys were taken from the home and sent there to work. And they said it was better than going to a reform school because they were learning the skill and blah, 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 all that stuff. So my dad actually told me that he remembers he had friends because my dad was born in 1944. And it was it ran from the end of the 19th century for like 50 some odd years it ran. Um, so he was young in school, but he remembers that he knew kids that went there. And that when they would walk to, they would take them to the creek to bathe. They would make them walk naked without anything because they wouldn't run away. And he was like, I just, he's like, that just stuck in my head. Like that has to be the most humiliating thing, right? You could do yeah. to these young kids ages eight to 16, the, the kids age range were. So he remembered them telling stories of that. And I was like, oh, can you imagine? It, it, the Watertown Board of Education actually ran that. Um, they lived year round. These children did eight to sixteen. Um, they were removed from their homes, and they would work on the farm. They would, you know, take care of all the animals, and they grew crops and all that stuff. And after fifty six years of operation, they sold it in nineteen fifty six to the Francis. I can't say that. Right. Francescan. That's another thing. I can't say things right. Franciscan. Francis thank you. Brothers, and they named it the Cupertino Friary. So they converted the former. There was a school room in the old building where the farm school was that they converted into a chapel and a sacristy and the style was very much like the Italian Franciscan design. In addition to the chapel, they had dormitories, obviously, and they were cloistered, so no women were allowed. Um, they had a tailor shop, an infirmary, a rec room, a woodworking shop. They actually had farm stuff there too. They had pigs and chickens and all that kind of stuff. And it, it uh, housed all the brothers that were part of the Franciscan friary. Um, the age range was 15 to 30, and there were people coming from the whole East Coast and Canada that would go to there to become full priests and brothers. The candidates who were not officially ordained would wear gray tunics with a white cord, and then the priests, the brother, and the brothers would wear a complete princess. What you think of and you see in the movies where they have the little hood and the cape, they wore the whole thing. And the reason why I say that is because when we tell you the story. There's a reason why I'm telling you what they wore. After Vatican II, there was like a decrease in like, no one wanted to become a priest anymore. People, they just, that wasn't anyone, no one was signing up for that. <laughs> so um, they ended up only after 12 years of owning it, they abandoned it. Um, in 1968 to 1974, it housed the Watertown School of Commerce. And in 1974, it was uh, purchased by the Spoken Word Assembly of God. Then 1975, it was completely abandoned. Um, 1992, there was an article in the Watertown Times that talked about some vandals that caused a lot of damage, and Harold R. Rounds was the owner at the time. And then in 2006, it became a horse farm. It had 23.6 acres. That's about a fourth of what the original acreage was. So I just want to give you a background of this property. Right now, it runs as a farm. I think there's horses. I think it's still there a horse used to farm. be horses, and then they... I haven't used... been by it in a long time. I haven't time. either. The last time I went, it was on, on the farm, and I got scared. <laughs> so there's, you know, right now it's so weird because you think about the history behind it. There was boys living there. There was, you know, um, a friary and now like the shelter is for horses. <laughs> it's just, it's just weird to think about the progress of this place because literally when you go like the old buildings, the horses are walking in and out of them. 
So it's just bizarre. And the old, there's a steeple in, in the chapel and all that stuff's still there, but there's horses living in it. Uh-huh. So weird. Back in the late 90s, my younger sister was in school for photography. Her name is Renee. She got permission from the owners to go inside the buildings and take pictures. And I, she lives down in Watkins Glen, and I called her, and she like was looking and couldn't find them, which was really, but I was really hoping she could get them so you could see. It was the weirdest thing to walk through them, like in the, um, the chapel, all the chairs and the pews were all pushed to one end and all stacked on top of each other. And That's always was, creepy. It was really weird. And That's one, creepy. And one of the buildings, the like it was a two story building, and the floor above you. Looked like somebody took a can opener and peeled it. Peeled it back. It was weird. I don't know how they did it, but I'm like, I'm not going up there. <laughs> so when we were teenagers, I don't know, like 18, 19. You were probably, I was probably 20. You okay, were probably so like, I was like 18 ish. 19, 19, 20, probably like. And we, you know, we thought, we heard a lot of stories about the reform school. I don't know if anyone else heard the tales about the reform school. It was haunted and all this stuff. So we were like, oh, let's go. Yeah. So it was like. And late. it was posted. So we yeah, you were obviously. Going, but we didn't, didn't care when you're 19. Yeah. It was posted. Yeah. So but we were. It did add another level of like. Yeah, like scary. Like fear. Because it's like anytime a car would drive by, you try to hide. Because you don't want to get caught on the posted property. Even though they didn't, they probably couldn't even see you. No, but it's pitch black. You get down on the ground. Like, oh my god, there's a car, and we just down the ground. And was there was a group of us. There was probably there about was, ten of us. Going. We're, just dumb. we're not very quiet people either. So it was, it was not. It was probably stupid. But we, we went a few times. We did. It wasn't just once. We went and then we went back and then we chickened out one time. I the last time I went, we got out of our cars and we were talking. And we heard this horrible noise in the woods, and we all looked at each other, and then it happened again. It was something I can't describe what it was. I have no idea. It was an unearthly sound, and it was loud, and we heard trees, like, falling down. That's all it sounded like. And we looked at each other, and we got in our cars, and we ran away. It's like, we're good. Let's go. (laughs) I got scared efficiently. Thank you very much. Yes, it was terrible. So the one time we went, um, there was about 10 of us, and we um, parked on the street because we were like, we won't park in front of it. No one will know we're there. Right. And we parked <laughs> on the street, and we were all like tiptoeing up to Scooby Doo it to there, and we were across the street, and some cars went by, so we were like jumped into a ditch. And and it, got was, all, it was this time of year, too, so there yeah. was fog. Like, yeah, which it was makes extra it even spooky. more spooky. Yeah. So. so we all start walking across the street to, and they have these big trees out front. And we all saw at the same time shadows of little children peeking. Like they were hiding, playing hide and seek with us, it seemed like. And we all saw it. They were, we saw these black shadows on the ground, and they were definitely children. We heard laughing. Yep. And we all were like, oh, it, but we were like, let's keep going. <laughs> now on my right page of 45, I'd be like, that's good. I, I saw you. I'm just going to go back to that bush. But we, we were like, let's keep going. So we, we go up to the, there's that bell tower. And we saw, I saw, I don't know if you saw, the figure of a, someone in a cloak or a tunic standing up in that. I was not, tower. I was on the other side. We were by the well. That's okay. when we heard, we we saw our car was coming, so of course we hit the deck, we're on the ground, and there was a wall, a well that had plywood over the top, and you could hear music box music coming up. Yeah. Through it. it was like, okay, let's go. <laughs> yeah. That was it. I was like, okay, we gotta go. <laughs> yeah, so we definitely saw children, which I, we had no clue the history of at the time no clue and I recently we heard like the lore about it or like is, rumors you know yeah, urban legends know. about the reform school but we didn't I didn't know like I didn't know anything about the friary didn't know that was a thing um, until just probably this past year uh, talking to my father asking him what's the name of that place Mark and I always talk about it but we were like what was the name of it I don't know the reform school is all everyone ever talked right. about and, he, and I was like that clicked in my head The fri- I saw a man in the cloak and it was a friar's Oh, and I remember people saying something about someone hanging themselves in the bell tower, but again, right. urban legend. Yeah. Yes, that's true. I couldn't find anything online that like said anything about anything like that, but um, we definitely saw ghosts of children playing. We did. We definitely heard music coming from a well, and I definitely saw a 
someone standing in that bell tower wearing a cloak of some sort. So that's the yes. our ghost story about the um, reform oh, school <laughs> on Spring Valley Drive. So if you want to drive by and get freaked out, it's Halloween. Go ahead. <laughs> you just stand outside of your car. And there's horses, so that's kind of cool too. Yeah, but the people <laughs> that own it now, they don't, they don't like. Uh, yeah, don't go trespassing. I'm not promoting trespassing. No. I just want to put that out there. <laughs> is there anyone that would like to share a story? That's what this is all about. I think uh, our wonderful and fearless director Tony Engelman would like to come up and talk. Ah, to I you love it. Yay! At, at <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Well, I'd like to welcome everybody to Paddock Mansion, um, the house of Edwin and all of Paddock. Um, the house was built between 1876 and 1878. Edwin and Olive lived here alone. They had no children. So they, they lived in this huge mansion by themselves with just a couple of servants. Um, Edwin passed away in 1909. Edwin passed away in 1909, and then Olive passed away in 1922. When Olive passed away in 1922, she bequeathed the mansion to the Historical Society to be used as a museum and for the gardens to be used as a public park. In 1924, the mansion actually did open as a museum. So it's been opened as a museum since uh, 1924. There are a lot, of, um, a lot of stories that go along with this place. Uh, I spend a lot of time here. People who have worked here before me have spent, you know, they spend all their days here and sometimes nights. Um, anything that we've ever experienced in this house has been, you know, it's a little unnerving, but it's never, it's never threatening. We think that it's probably Miss Olive coming and checking on her house. Make sure we're doing it right. Hopefully we are, because she's 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 been pretty pretty good to us um, so far. One of my very first encounters when I um, started here, I started here as a volunteer, and I started um, as a researcher doing research requests that people would send in research requests, and I would work on the third floor, which are the archives, and I would get, um, get them the answers to whatever they needed researched from Jefferson County. Um, when I was up there, I, long sweaters are my thing. I'm always, I'm always wearing a long sweater. It doesn't matter what time of year. And when I was up on the third floor, I would always feel this breeze fluffing my, fluffing my sweater. And I just, I, it's, it's an old drafty house. And so I just, I didn't even think anything of it. I would just, you know, kind of bother me because it, it's fluffing, you know, the breeze is fluffing my sweater. Well, one day when I was watching the front desk, an older gentleman came in and he said, he came in with a younger man and he said, um, I'm leaving Watertown. I'm going to live with my grandson. He said, my grandfather used to be the caretaker for the paddocks. They, he used, they used to live, my uh, grandfather and his, my grandmother used to live out in the house back here, which was the caretaker's house. And he said, I remember being here as a young child. He said, we would, he said, we would go on the third floor with the maids on the, in the winter, they would hang the laundry up there because um, they obviously couldn't hang it out in Watertown, New York in December, January. And he said, when we went up there with the maids, when they were hanging laundry, he said, we would raise Cain. He said, they would be up there hanging the laundry and we would go up behind them and hit their skirts. And I was like, oh, there it is. <laughs> That's exactly what it felt like. So after that, I knew what it was, and it still didn't scare me, but when it happened, I'd be like, them darn kids, you know? <laughs> and, and, but that's exactly what it felt like, so I think that was kind of awesome. Um, some of the rumors that happen around here that we've had accounts of, um, people see a woman on the stairs quite often when they come to visit. Um, they most specifically say, on the 13th stair, I don't know, I've never seen anybody on the stairs, but that's one of the things that people see. People see Miss Olive looking out of her bedroom window when they're coming by at night. So possibly, but like I said, I've never, ever been scared here. 
The only thing that's ever scared me in this house is one time there was a bat. <laughs> I left. That, was, that got me out of the house. But um, I mean, we have overnight things here, and I've never, ever felt threatened, scared. Um, sometimes things make me go, hmm. But uh, if, if there's something here, I believe it probably is Miss Olive. Maybe it's one of the servants that lived here. But I just believe that they're here checking on their house. It's, it's, it's never anything threatening. Wonderful. Yeah. And I, I'm a firm believer that, you know, we all know energy. You can't destroy it, right? So um, we're all energy. So you're, if something big happens somewhere, even if your ghost isn't there, your energy you left the imprint. Right, so it's gonna keep doing it. So they're having fun up there, flipping those skirts. That was probably a good time for them. It left an energy, right? For I like that. That's really cool. Anyone else have something they want to share? Okay, come on up. I'm not from her, but it's from where I grew up. I like it. Oh, I can flip that right on yourself. You got this. <laughs> okay, I'm from New Hampshire originally, um, and I grew up in. Um, a little town called New Boston, New Hampshire. It's right outside of Manchester, if anybody's familiar. Um, and my mom and my sisters and I moved into this house, and it was this cute little ranch house, and it was very lovely, and it was built by this nice couple, um, and their sons sold it to my mom. And uh, soon after we moved in, we noticed little things, um, like moving in the house, nothing significant. We just kind of Maybe my, my sister was little. She was like in kindergarten, first grade at the time. So we're like, okay, Aaron. Um, but we just, you know, never thought much of it. And uh, my mom was a single mom. And so I, she would work two or three jobs at a time. So I took care of my sister pretty often. And um, it wasn't soon after we moved into the house that my mom found out that the wife of the couple had died at the base of the stairs. She had fallen down the stairs and had passed away. And we didn't know this when we had first my mom first purchased the house. She wasn't happy <laughs> to find that out after the fact. Um, but then start, things started kind of, after she found this out, started becoming more active. And it was kind of interesting. So um, my base, my mom put me in the basement. We had this big finished basement and she actually let me have the bedroom in the basement, which was actually kind of sweet because I was a teenager at the time. Yeah. And I was like, this is awesome. <laughs> um, and at night, and it was pitch black in my room because I'm in the basement, there would be this glow and the base of the stairs was right outside my door. And there would be a glow, like an orb, out right at my door every night. And um, I didn't notice it. I always kind of overthought it, thinking, oh, it's like the glow from my alarm clock or something, you know. But it was like on the opposite side. Of my, the room was like the size of this room. It was a really large room. And my bed was over here. And the glow was over there. So I was like, and then I noticed it started moving one night. So I was like, huh interesting. So I was like, all right, it's cool. So I started talking to her. I'd be like, hey, Mrs. Dignan, what's up? And we'd be like, you know, cool. I'm just going to sleep here. <laughs> so one day, um, and this was probably one of the first times that I really, really had an interaction with Mrs. Dignan other than that. Um, my sister and I were in the kitchen and it was after school one day. I picked her up from school um, and I brought her home and she had a glass of milk and my sister put it down the counter and she had put it down and like this, and it started to go like this. And all of a sudden, it just went like this. Oh. And, I, and my sister and I went, let's go outside. And, like, and I'm like four, I'm 16. I had my license. And my sister was like, oh, oh. and I'm like, we're just going to go outside and play basketball. It's cool. But she never did anything more than that. She always just kind of had little things that she would just let us know she was there. Um, another big one was Christmas. Um, my mom always put oranges in the foot of our stockings. It was a tradition. I know maybe a lot of people have that tradition as well. Yep, yeah. yep. Yeah. So one Christmas morning, we all woke up. I did my mom's stocking. My mom did my, mine and my sister's, obvious. And um, we woke up, and some of my mom's stuff was in my stocking. Some of my sister's stuff was in my stocking. Like, everything was, like, all swished around. Not everything, but things were missed, and all of the oranges were sitting in front of them. Oh, Oh, it was in the very foot. Right. So we're all like, Merry Christmas, Mrs. Dignan. 
so yeah, so that's my story. So we had Mrs. Dignan and she was the sweetest woman. And we just think that she really loved that my mom brought her little girls to live there and because she was a very sweet lady and yeah, so yeah, yeah. But she was just, she was always just giving us little, like she, I think she ultimately was happy that we were there because yeah, yeah, so, yeah, I think so, yeah, yeah. That's fine. <laughs> Or another volunteer, come on up. Oh, yeah, you're gonna make magnets for anyone that comes up. I forgot. She bought stickers, Margaret. Give us all the stickers. We got merch. Come on up. Hi, I'm Rachel. <laughs> um, so my story started. I was probably about twelve or thirteen, and I was at a friend's house. And my mom was at work. My brother, my brother was with his um, his father. So I went home to get something to drink. And when I walked into my kitchen, like I had to walk into my front door to get, you know, into the kitchen. And standing by the back door inside of my kitchen was this old man, and he had on the fisherman's uh, like a fisherman's hat with lures all over it. And I like screamed when I saw him. So he ran out the back door into the field behind the apartment complex. And my mom called the cops, and a report had to be made, um, and then, but nothing ever came of it. So I used to go to um, Tybo on the square years ago, and on my way back from Tybo, um, it was raining, and the lightning flashed, and that old man was on the side of the road. <laughs> and I didn't say I didn't say anything, but I was like, "That's the guy that was in my backyard. Should I tell my mom so she can tell the cops?" You know, I'm like twelve. You're still, you know, kind of childlike at that, you know, age. I didn't say anything. And then I was in my mom's room probably maybe two or three days later. And I was looking out of her bedroom window. And in the courtyard of the apartment complex, there was a playground. And um, there was like the two fort houses and then a bridge with swings underneath of it. And the lightning flashed again, which is odd that there was two thunder and lightning storms in the same week, right? And when the lightning flashed, I saw him standing underneath by the swings and that's when I was like okay mom this is messed up we got to talk about this and she told me you know well yeah it's probably just probably just a ghost you know your grandmother was like that she could see. she could see ghosts and stuff she, and my mom was just like don't worry about it and after she told me not to worry about it like I totally trusted and believed in her and I was like oh okay everything's fine now <laughs> but at first I was completely freaked out and um yeah, we thought he was a real man. Like, you know, yeah. we were telling the neighbors, watch out for this guy. And yeah, no. nope, only I could see him. <laughs> Did you end up seeing, have you ever seen other Nope. Ghosts? After, um, I've, yeah, I've seen other ghosts before, um, but not him again. Okay. After that last time, I don't know why, it just stopped. Um, I was like, well, this isn't fun anymore. She's like, I know. She's yeah, okay. she figured it out. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> yeah. Um, I did see, I don't, it wasn't like really like a ghost. Um, but I was young and I was, um, playing in the kitchen with my brother and I was spinning in a circle and I saw this, um, vision of like this woman. It was kind of like, um, like a cameo picture she looked like, um, and she had like dark hair, you know, white skin and, um, uh, the phone rang like a few minutes later and it was my mom's friend who's coincidentally, her name was Rachel as well, um, had called and her mother had just passed away. And so we went, we went over there, uh, you know, later on, you know, after the funeral and stuff like that. And I, she was showing us pictures of her mom and that was the woman that I wow. feel like I saw. Yeah. I was like, that looks, that looks like her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Cool. <laughs> uh, yeah. Thanks. Creepy. You're Thanks. welcome. <laughs> Yeah, make you do all by yourself. Where's that toy? You can just hold it if you don't have a okay. good clip. Okay, I'll hold it. <laughs> um, uh, my name is Michelle White. My husband is back there, rudely hiding. <laughs> <clears throat> he's going to be doing the haunted walk soon too, so you know that's probably why he's rudely hiding back there. Anyway, um, so we live in a really old house, 1845 or 1846. 1845, right? 1845. Um, it's an old Greek revival. Um, 
it's actually um, was built before Clinton Street existed, so it was built on what is now Rexford, but was originally Massey Ave. Um, so it's the road that goes to what Maria Mercy used to be. Um, and so it, it's definitely has, it has had its um, pleasant hauntings. Like it's not, they haven't been, thank goodness, evil. I've not seen anything. I've heard a lot. <laughs> um, before we moved into this house, I remember my mother-in-law would call us and say, do you know that the garage keeps opening and shutting on its own? And so when we got into the house, um, I was in the kitchen by myself and I would hear the garage go up and then go down. And I got so bothered by it. I literally opened up the door and looked at the garage. And I'm like, will you stop? <laughs> and then it would. It stopped for a few seconds. And then you hear it go. Nah, 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 nah. So we called someone in to fix it. He changed everything. He said, there's nothing wrong with this. There's no electrical problems with this thing. I'm like, well, it's going up and down by itself. So there's something. Fix it. <laughs> um <laughs> So that was one occurrence. There's been many times um, when my husband has been working late and I've heard, um, so we have the main downstairs and then there's the old stair uh, staircase that goes up where the bedrooms are. And I would hear someone coming up the stairs and I'm like, hey, Jason, Jay, Jay. <laughs> There'd be no one. And I'd be like, doo, 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 doo. you need to come home now <laughs> because there's something or someone coming up the stairs and it's not you. So he'd always come back and check everything out. There'd never be anyone there, but I would always hear something. Um, and then there, uh, recently, before I go into the little kids, recently, now we have had a few spirits that have been moved along by a, a medium, psychic medium. Um, but recently, that still occurs, is I will be in the bedroom, and we have old doors. Our, our house is so old that we have, like, the, the type of windows that have ropes in them and everything. Um, so it's hard to get things repaired. Like we have the, we have closets that are like beveledly bent. Like you can't get them made. Like they're like kind of like made warped looking and um, the banister that kind of curves and everything. So I'll be in the bedroom and they're old doors. Like our main door is a skeleton key door. We don't, oh, yeah. we don't have the skeleton key. Oh, so we no. use the latch. <laughs> but I'll be laying in bed and I'll just out of nowhere. Now they're not easy doors to open because they get, because they're old. But I'll just, and I'll think my son's playing a joke on me. And I'll be sitting in bed reading a book and I hear, as I'm in bed, the door is opening. I'm like, Michael, uh, Michael. And all of a sudden I hear what? And he's like down in the kitchen. And I'm like, uh, nothing. <laughs> but you're upstairs playing a drunk on mom. Like, I get up and I'm like, shut the door, lock. <laughs> but um, there have been spirits there. Um, there were three children, three children, and one um, older lady. So where are... Our TV room is right now, I guess, used to be the kitchen. And then we have the kitchen on there. And I guess um, one of the mediums, I don't know if anyone's heard of Wilson Stevenson. He's, um, he's the only one I believe in. Um, he was there. I don't know if it was your, him or the other one that was said it smelled like. It might have been your, uh, the other psychic. But smell, if you ever smell like warm bread or something like that, she's there and she doesn't understand why this is not a kitchen anymore. Um, um, and then we had three children, one this is, makes me think about how spirits don't have to be in the house. So we had one spirit that actually was in our house that wasn't from our house. He was a neighboring spirit that liked to play jokes, and he would come into our house. Um, <laughs> nice little guy. And then they say certain people are sensitive. My daughter would always be very uncomfortable in her bedroom. She says, I don't like how it feels. It just feels uncomfortable. We found out there was a little girl there. And she had perished in a fire that was in the house, what, how over 100 years ago, Jason? Um, and she was afraid to go into the light because of the fire. Aww. But mom had crossed over. And she would like to play with my daughter's toys and her dolls. And so Madison never saw anything moving, but she just felt uncomfortable in the room. And I'd be like, there's nothing, Madison's fine. And then there was another little boy in the house that we have a thing we call the Alice in Wonderland room off my son's bedroom. It's like an attic. We finished it to be like a playroom. But if you're taller than me, you can't stand in it. <laughs> so I'm the only one in the family that can stand in it. Um, but my, Jason has never liked going into this room. He always felt uncomfortable. We found out there was a little boy in there that had a, a special need. Um, and my son is, has autism. So he would always go in there and play and never had a problem with it. But this spirit did not like men. Just did not like men. So anytime Jason would go into this area, he was like, I don't know. I'm like, what are you what's wrong with you? It's fine. I never had a problem. My daughter, my son was fine. And then we found out from Wilson that there was um, 
a, a, a boy in there because he was not allowed to be seen or heard. Because he, oh. So they would leave him. So he had to be in this area of the house. And he was in there, and they said that, um, I think it was Wilson or it might have been the other one that said that he was watching over Michael, my son. So Michael was never bothered by him, but he didn't like men. He only was, I don't know why, but the spirit never liked men. So that's why anybody that went in there that was a man did not feel comfortable in there. Wow. So we had him. But the one of our psychic mediums that came in there did move over. She came right in and she said, you have a little girl here. And there was a fire. And she's afraid to cross over. I'm going to cross her over to her mom. So she did. I wasn't there when this happened. So she did. Now, if you don't believe in spirits and stuff, you're going to be like, this is but this, this was legitimate. <laughs> My daughter came home. And she's never had a problem in her room since wow. because she's felt so much better. And none of them, we've never had anyone say that they were ever cruel spirits, like any, no anger right. in there, just ones that like to play around and everything like that. Yeah. But, um, so there's still stuff going on, but if, I mean, it's, it's built in 1845. You got to figure there has to be some, because I think the last family, the one family lived in there for over a hundred years. Oh, wow. Uh, so yeah, yeah. So, but, so we try to keep it as much historic as we can. I think that the spirits like us for that, and they yeah. leave us alone. So, yeah. so, those, so those are my stories. Thank you, you so know. much. <laughs> those are great. Uh, my home was built in 1892, I think. And um, I've had some weird, like, you always hear people walking up the stairs. Um, there's an apartment upstairs. It's turned into a two-family home. There's an apartment upstairs. And then I live downstairs, my husband and I, and my son actually lives upstairs now. He couldn't live too far away from mom, and that's okay. <laughs> like, you don't ever have to leave. My husband's like, yes, he does. No. <laughs> but, um, so I've always heard people walking up and down the stairs when there wasn't people there. My brother actually lived up there for a while. He heard the same things, people walking up and down the stairs. But the creepiest thing was, before I met my husband, um, I was, though we had the, I had the whole house, like, to myself at one point with my son. And I was sleeping one night and um, I kept on hearing banging and I thought it was the cat like in something. And I was like, oh, a cat, whatever. And I was so tired and I was like, bang, 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 bang. And right before this happened, my dad had insulated my attic for me, blue insulation. And then he, he nailed the door shut because he didn't want anyone going up there to ruin the insulation. So the door was nailed shut to the attic. Um, so... I kept hearing this banging and banging, banging. And I was like, what is that? And I, so I just went back to sleep. And the next day I woke up and I went to the bathroom, which is where the attic door was. And the nails were out about an inch and a half and looked like someone was trying to get in to the apartment, but there was no way to get to the attic unless you went through that door. So definitely some spirits there. I've never felt, I, one time, I don't know if anyone's ever experienced sleep paralysis. I have had that one time in the house. It was the worst experience of my life. And it was right around the same time that happened. So I don't know if it all had something to do with each other, but um, definitely spirits in my house, but nothing. That was the only time I ever felt scared or it, usually we just hear people walking up and down the stairs or something like that. But um, does anyone else have something they want to share? Oh, come on up. Uh, my name is Mary Jane. Uh, thank you guys for having me here. I did a lot of traveling when I was pregnant and I was in Virginia staying with a family. And their house was built in 1950. They had left, and it was New Year's Eve. My boyfriend was downstairs waiting for the ball to drop. I was pregnant, so I was like, I'm going to go to bed. I, I can't do this. <laughs> so I went upstairs, and I took a nap, and there was this cat, Pooh, that used to follow me. And he always stayed with me, which was cool, because, you know, I'm pregnant, so I like little fluffy friends. <laughs> so, so with that night, like, I go upstairs, and I crash so hard, and I wake up just all of a sudden, and I'm looking, and there's this tall, dark, shadowy figure. And I'm, like, trying to, like, get a look at it. And I'm just sitting up closer and closer, and it's just moving slowly across. And then it gets to the end of the bed, and then I see it no longer. And my heart's racing, and I look over, and Pooh is sitting there just staring at me, just straight up. And I don't know, but I'm pretty sure, like, Pooh was following me to be like protective in a way, right? but yeah. yeah. So that was like, as an adult, that was my most intense experience. Yeah, yeah. It was really creepy. Cause like, I was like trying to like clear my head to make sure cause I just opened my eyes. You see shadows in the dark, right. Right. but this was like definitive, like an outline of a head kind of like edgy and then tall and Ooh. straight. Yeah, it was, it was pretty intense, but who had my back? So 
So. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Huh? I love it. When you said a cat's poo, I thought you meant poop for two seconds, but then I got what you were talking about. Not poop. <laughs> <laughs> it was real quick, real quick thought. And I was like, no, that can't be it. Um, you know, like I, my parents' home growing up, it was built in the 70s. And it's, it's it, like that was the 50s. But you don't have to live in an old house to have creepy experiences because um, in my parents' house, a couple of weird things happened. Um, I had a music box that was a piano and you had to turn it sideways to get it to turn on and then turn it back right. It was like one of those. It was like gravity done. And that thing would go off. You had to turn it sideways, but it didn't move. And it would move. It would start playing sometimes, which creeped me out. But the biggest thing was I had, I was real fancy in the 90s. And I had a, like a six CD player in my room, you know, oh, yeah. those ones. I had one of those. Yeah, I had the good one. And um, anyone remember Soup Dragons, the band Soup Dragons? Who's old like me? Um, anyway, Soup Dragons had a song called Divine Thing. And... Um, it kept playing. Like I had six CDs in there and all of a sudden that CD would play. And I thought my brother's up to something. My brother's room was next to mine. And I, I was like, I'm going to take the CD out. So I took it out and put it away. And then a couple days later, it happened again. I'm like, Oh, I'm so angry. I'm like, he's trying to mess with me. And I'm not pretend I don't even notice it's happening. So I took the CD and I hit it in a different thing. And then it happened again. And I finally called him out. I'm like, do you have a remote to my CD? Like what's going on? And he's like, I don't, he had no clue I was talking about. The CD ended up in the CD player all the time. It kept playing Divine Thing, which was crazy. I either liked the song or it was like, I'm here. You know, I'm a divine thing in your house. Um, and then the other thing that happened there, I don't know if anyone's ever heard of the white lady. My joke yeah, with this is, yeah. it's not a Karen. <laughs> um, she, a white lady is, <laughs> she doesn't have a bob. She doesn't have a bob. No. Um, she, she. <laughs> she is an all white, she's all white, an all white figure that comes like either there's always a story, like a tragic story surrounding her. Either she lost a love or her, her child. She's sad. And she seems to appear places that when there's sadness or something bad happens. And actually Rochester has her own version of the white lady. And but she's all over the world. People have said they've seen the white lady. And, um, one time when I, after I, my first, I collect husbands. So after my first husband, um, we split up. <laughs> um, I was, I moved in with my parents for a little bit until he found his way along. And um, I, you know, it, I was sad. I was heartbroken, obviously. So um, I was just really, really sad. And I remember waking up in the middle of the night to go pee. And I, because that's what you do at 3 a.m. because the witching hour is your it's your bladder the witching hour is your bladder and especially when you're a mom it's like oh, I gotta go pee. so I got up at 3 in the morning and I went to the bathroom and I walked out and at the very bottom of my parents stairs because their bathroom was directly you could see right down there was a woman all in white never seen her before never seen her again never ever I mean I grew up in that house um, all in white she looked up at me and she like nodded and I was I ran to the room and what do you do when you see a ghost you cover your Hold self with a blanket <laughs> because that protects you. And I remember telling my mom, I still to this day, she's like, you're insane. There is not. I, but I just recently, we just did an episode about the white lady. And I realized she was there because I was so heartbroken. She was there to like, because I, I manifested her, you know, because I was so sad at that time. And, um, and that's why I've never seen her again because I'm not anymore. So it's just, it, it, there's just that energy, you know, you put out there and you can draw those things to you. And, um. Yeah, that's my story on that. Does anyone have anything they would like to thank you? <laughs> All right, please take a, if you come up and share before you leave, grab a magnet. I don't know necessarily that this is a ghost story, but I went over to JFK in the corner and I went to take a picture with him and I heard something go clunk. And I took the picture and I sent, sent it to my friend and I'm like, yeah, like something just fell right then. I don't know. Is that part of like the ambiance? And I look over and there's a lock on the floor. Where the lock came from, if someone can tell me. Right over here? Yeah, like right over, right over here just now. I went over and I heard kakunk. And I'm looking for the wings. I'm going to knock stuff down. But it's over near the window, not JFK. What is it, Susie? What is it? Maybe it's olives. Olives here. All right. Yeah, well, is it a ghost story? I don't know. But, I, I mean, coincidential. Olive is a prohibitionist, so she's probably not thrilled that people are in her house drinking 
<laughs> but it's also supporting her house in a way, right? We're keeping her house going. Exactly. Olive, be cool with you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, I have a cryptid story, sort of. And it's kind of like what Margaret was talking about earlier about when she went to the reform school and she heard the weird noise. But I still wait till May 1st again. Yeah. So around the same time as a teenager, a friend of mine was like, everyone, anyone, yeah, Mooney Gulf, right? Everyone yeah. knows that is, right? You go there, the swim in, the party in, all the fun stuff. I had never gone there. And he's like, let's go. But we went the wrong way. He didn't really know where he was going. He just kind of took me on this road randomly. First, we ended up at this house and all these people started walking towards us. And it was the creepiest thing I ever saw. I thought I was in Hills Have Eyes. And I was like, this is not where we need to be. We're like backing up and there are all these people. But then we end up in this dirt road and I'm, we're driving in and I had a 1975 Nova. It was the coolest car ever. Coolest car ever. Had roses hand painted on the back. It was so cool. And I was the coolest 18 year old that ever lived, I thought. So we, yeah, but I was 18 when I went here. So we go down this dirt road and I couldn't go any farther because it was muddy and I had this old 70s car. So I'm like, I'm not taking my car any farther. So let's walk. So we're walking, walking, walking. And I'm like, I think you, this is, there's no water here. We're in the middle of nowhere. And all of a sudden we heard this, I can't describe the sound I heard. It was like an animal screeching. And I was like, what's that horrible sound? And um, it happened again. And then we heard trees falling and we hear, see trees and something's coming at us. So we start running. Of course, he pushes me out of the way to get to the car first because he's a gentleman. And I, I had the keys, though. Joke's on him. He couldn't go anywhere. Could get, so whatever. And anyway, we were running. We didn't even turn around to look back, but we always called it Man Goat because we were listening to the Dead Kennedys on the way there, and the song Man Goat was on, Cream Corn, Cream Corn. So if you want to catch a whatever that was, bring Cream Corn. And then if you've never heard the Dead Kennedys, you don't know what I'm talking about, but that's part of the song. And um, we always joke about Man Goat living in the woods near Adams. So there's a Bigfoot. There's something big enough to knock trees over, like trees over, falling. Not big ones, but... You know, so we have our own cryptid here because Margaret heard it at a totally different time and a totally different I mean, spot. Blood like, you know, when we were standing we were with our friend Pete and Renee, and we had two cars and we parked on the side of the road and we got out and we hadn't seen each other in a while, so we're chatting and we're laughing and being stupid because we're teenagers. And then all of a sudden, we're like, wait, did you guys hear that? What? And then it did it again. And it was loud. We could hear it in the in the, in the forest next to us, and we're just like, what the hell is that? And we're getting in the car, and my had this really crappy Dodge Omni from the oh, 80s, and you couldn't just roll the windows up, you had to like hold, hold them. Hold them. <laughs> like, trying to drive. <laughs> hold my window up at the same time. <laughs> No. <laughs> always your windows should be up. Oh and always make sure they're locked. It's always locked. I'm like, let's go by. <laughs> so there's definitely some weird high pitched screeching cryptid that knocks trees over in right. Jefferson County somewhere. I don't know what it is. I've never seen it, heard it, and around it, but I didn't like it. Mango. That's what we called it. Definitely mango. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Does anyone have a tale to tell? Oh, come on up. Yeah. Lego man himself. <laughs> so just put this on. Yeah, this clip there. All right. So my older sister's best friend um, really loved to do seances. And I was pretty skeptical when they do them, you know, and I'd go in and mess around, flip the lights and run away real quick, you know. Um, but uh, I was like, all right, I'll try it. So... We did a seance one night with my sister, her best friend, and another one of her friends. And, you know, we were like, all right, you know, if, if there's anything here, give us a sign. And we put a tissue box in the middle of our seance circle, right? And we were trying to contact my older sister's dead cat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it was crazy because... I'm pretty sure we actually did. <laughs> so, 
So the, the, the box started to move, you know, and we all had our eyes closed. You could hear it, though. You know, it was like a little rustling sound. And, you know, we all open our eyes expecting, you know, like me to be there, like knocking the box around or whatever. Nobody was touching it. And we all freaked the heck out. Oh, my God. We were so scared because we're like, you're not touching it, are you? No, no, nobody's touching it. It's moving, scratching sounds. So my sister freaks out, grabs the box, throws it across the room, and we all run. <laughs> and, you know, we, we calmed down a little bit. We went back in. And um, I was like, all right, let's check the box. You know, it was like a regular tissue box, and it was empty. But we took a closer look at it, and there was definitely claw marks in the box Whoa. that weren't there before. Yeah. So wow. was, yeah, that was, you know that was pretty wow. freaky, right? Cats yeah. Yeah. Did? Mm -hmm. Butterscotch. <laughs> Butterscotch. Butterscotch was the cat's name. <laughs> Thank you so much. Take a magnet. You can't have too many in your house. <laughs> uh, if it was on a table, the cat would have knocked that box off. Because you know, <laughs> you know how you know the world's not flat because the cat would have knocked us all off by now, right? <laughs> That's my joke about flat earthers. <laughs> Correct myself up. Um, anyone else has something to share? I see fingers being pointed. Come on up. <laughs> Are you okay to be recorded? Okay. Just clip. Is this on? Are we on? Yeah, we're on. I actually grew up south of here, um, just outside of Syracuse, in a podunk town called Kirkville. <laughs> um, as a teenager, I lived in this old farmhouse that was like a composite of the original farmhouse that stood on the property and like half of the house that was across the street. Uh, they, I guess, dragged it across the street and just attached it. It's so like the front half of the house. Uh, the living room, my bedroom, and my parents' room, and the dining room were like that original uh, house from across the street. And then this, the back half of the house was the original farmhouse that stood there. I feel like you must get what you call it. If my stepdad had anything to do with the construction of it, it probably was. Um, big fan of duct tape. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So um, I didn't move in there until I was about 16. And uh, by the time I was like 17, my friends and I had noticed some kind of weird things that would go on in the house. Um, there was one night there had been a storm and the power was out. So naturally, I've got three 17-year-old girls and there's no power. Clearly, we have to eat the entire chocolate cake or it's going to go bad because, yes. you know, there's no refrigerator. Yes. And uh, we were all standing around the kitchen island, and my back is to the basement door, but my two friends are on the other side, so they can see directly to the basement door. And I had always been nervous about the basement, so I'd always had a habit of every time I came in the house, made sure that that door was closed. And when we had come in from outside, I went and made sure that the door was closed, and we proceeded to eat a chocolate cake. Yeah. So <laughs> my friend... Standing across from me uh, says, didn't you close the basement door? And I said, yeah. And she goes, isn't the power out? Mm-hmm. Why is the basement door open and why is there a light on downstairs? <laughs> this is why I didn't like the basement. <laughs> so, so I was like, okay, go close the damn door and walk across the kitchen being the idiot that I am, lean on, around the door to look down the very terrifying steps to the basement. And sure enough, there is a light on down there. And you can see a shadow in the light. No. And the power is most definitely out because I'm flipping the switch to turn <laughs> the light off and nothing is happening. So as the shadow gets darker, I said, screw this, slam the door, and we all ran up to my room, which wasn't any better. <laughs> Uh, because it was a part of that same house. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, a few nights after that, um, I'm asleep, and my brother would have this habit of when he'd come home from work, he used to work for Owl Wire, so he'd come home at like 3, 4 o'clock in the morning. And his favorite thing to do is wake up his baby sister and just irritate her. 
he would try to steal all my pillows or just steal my blankets just to be a jerk. That's, that's what you do. Yeah. So <laughs> I, it's, I don't know what time it is. It's the middle of the night and I can feel somebody sit on the side of my bed. And I just, in my half awake state, assumed it was my brother and said, what? What in the actual do you want? <laughs> and he didn't say anything. So I opened my eyes and there was a man sitting on my bed next to me. He was wearing one of those old red flannel shirts, kind of like the one my husband's wearing, but it was red. Uh, he had on like uh, what I would assume now would be like Carhartt overalls, but obviously they weren't Carhartt. They were all ripped up. They were a mess. He had a bushy red beard and bushy red hair, and he's just sitting there staring at me. And I said, loser, what do you want? Because that's what I call my brother um, in the middle of the night. My brother was a ginger, had a big ginger beard and, a, and bright red hair. So I, again, just assumed it was my brother. And I said, what do you want, loser? And again, he didn't say anything. So I finally opened my eyes all the way, sat up, and there was nobody there. But I could feel where the bed had been sunk down from somebody sitting there. And I, could, I still can remember what the guy looked like. And I remember telling my stepdad about the next morning, and he goes, I, because I have no idea what you're talking about. I'm great. You think I'm crazy. Awesome. Because I've lived here for, you know, 20 years. I have no idea. Never experienced anything. Okay. So probably about a month after that, I was home alone. Parents had gone out shopping. My stepdad had this weird love affair with Walmart. So every Friday night was Walmart in Chinese. Uh, I didn't want to do it. So I stayed home and the whole family went for their weekly trip to Walmart and to get Chinese at the Chinese buffet on the boulevard, and I stayed home. Our front room, which again was part of that original house from across the street, is where we kept our old um, oh, compact computer. Oh. You remember compact, yeah. you know? You could custom build your computer before Dell was a thing. Um, and I'm on AOL. Gotta, gotta lay that one out, too. Oh, um, because, funny. well, because this, the being on AOL thing is what ended up kind of screwing me over in the end. We had an old dog and a deaf dog. The old dog, she just looked like a big old bear. Her name was Bo and Allie was an Australian shepherd and she was deaf, like toned out. You, you could call her and nothing, but if you went like this to her, she'd roll over and play dead. Oh. So it was really cute. She understood the hand signals. Um, Bo was so old that she just didn't move. Like her life was spent on this little piece of carpet that my stepdad would clean for her every week, you know, so she had this nice soft place to lay in the hallway and she literally never moved. And I'm sitting in at the computer and to my left is the entry hallway to the house and the stairs that lead up to the second floor. And all of a sudden, Allie, who can't hear a goddamn thing, comes running from the back of the house, stands at the bottom of the stairs, looking up, just barking like crazy. And that's when Bo, the dog who literally was so old she couldn't walk, got her ass up and walked to the bottom of the stairs and started doing the same thing. I grabbed the phone to call my parents to tell them to come home, but I was still online. <laughs> So all you get is that that sound, that very special AOL sound that says you can't use your phone because you're on the internet. So I'm real quick trying to, trying to remember in my panic how to actually get offline at that time. I ended up just unplugging the computer. <laughs> totally logical. Called my stepdad and said, you need to get home. The dogs are freaking out. And he's like, yeah, no, the dogs don't freak out. Allie can't hear anything and Bo never moves. I'm like, well, I don't know if you can hear them right now, but they're both standing at the bottom of the stairs freaking out. And uh, he goes, all right, well, we're on our way anyway. Okay. So as I'm hanging up with him, I turn and look again at the dogs freaking out just in time to see a shadow come from the top of the stairs all the way down across the foyer and out the front door so violently that the screen door actually opened and slammed shut. Uh, I called him back and said, you really need to get here now because this just happened. And he goes, man, I knew I should have had the house cleansed before you guys moved in. I'm like, you're <laughs> such a jerk. He never took it seriously. 
ever. Like even to this day, if weird thing happen, weird things happen when we go to visit, he's just like, man, I keep forgetting to call that person to come in and <laughs> exercise the demons. I'm like, you are such a jerk. I go, I don't even know why I like you. But like it, it was the weirdest like first six months of living in a place that I've ever had to have all these things happen. And if that first night my two friends weren't with me, I would be like, I swear I'm losing my mind. <laughs> but it was. Thank you for sharing. Grab a magnet. <laughs> I know there's more. I have so many. I'm waiting for you. Come on up. There you go. Hi. This is, how's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> well, uh, my name is Devin. I'm on the board here. Thank you all for coming and hearing story. I missed part of it, so sorry if you're tardy there. Um, yeah. So before I, I have two stories from here that I'll tell you, but real quick, about 20 years ago, uh, I went to visit a friend. I was going to school in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, home for summer. I ended up meeting a friend who we went to this other house, and it's about 25, 30 minutes south of Watertown. Supposedly, um, there's an Indian burial ground out there. Like, we weren't going out to cause any kind of ruckus or anything. It's just, they happened to say, hey, we want to go check this out. I say, okay. Um, long story short of it is, and I'm sorry if I ramble, but we ended up walking about, I don't know, a mile or so into the woods. And about like a third of the way in, there was just a boom, just Indian bass drum and just out of nowhere. And the guy stops dead in his tracks. And he just puts his hand up and he goes, that's one. I said, well, that's one what? <laughs> I mean, clearly it was a drum beat, but what the hell? So we keep going. You get a little further in and let's say, let's say two thirds of the way now. And then there's another boom again. Also to make a suspenseful story, this guy has a shotgun. We're going to the woods. Like this was my first time going in nature. And I was like, you should, I'm a city kid. I'm like, you sure you want to go on? The safety's on the thing. And uh, I don't know. But so we finally, we come out to a clearing in the woods. Um, best I can see in the dark, it, it more or less looked like a fairly circle-ish area, wide open field. And um, so from there, the edge of the woods, we walk and all stand. There was four of us. So all back to back. And we all took a direction. And we just the, the guy said, so we're just going to stand here and we're going to be quiet. So that's exactly what we did. And after, it probably wasn't even much more than 60 seconds to two minutes, but one by one by one by one, like shadow people were coming out of the tree. And I've never, I get chills every time they tell us because I've never seen any, I've seen it like a ah, shadow person here, but you could well, like move it with quick eye. The, like the four of us were just seeing like these things coming out of the woods and he goes, did you guys see that? And I said, yeah, we're surrounded. Boom, boom, boom. They were gone. Three drum beats and the, there was just like a black circle by the end of it. And just drum beats again and they were just disappeared. And then it was just quiet. And then we we said thank you. like, And we, we talked, you know, we meant no disrespect in just being there. But I've never been so shook in my life. Like in a situation like that, like. I mean, there, I, I want to say there were hundreds of them that just, that we were getting surrounded and then it was just boom, 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 and they were gone. Did you just was, your shirts? Change your shirts after that? I mean, no, I was still, and this is pretty much like 20 years ago to this summer, I want to say. And, um, so yeah, so I can't necessarily explain that one. I don't, to my knowledge, I've never been at any, uh, Indian burial grounds per se that I've known of to, have energy like that just the energy was palpable like you could have cut that situation with a knife like it was so cool i like, i hope somebody gets to experience something like that whether it, not an ancient indian burial ground but just the uh, capacity that was around that situation right there it, it was just so cool and then they were gone so enough about that let's talk about this building for a second uh, about two months ago uh we were having one of our board meetings in there, and uh, okay, Ryan, I'm gonna have you stand up in a second, but you got a second. So <laughs> I'm like, we had our tables going this way with the building. I'm sitting at the end, um, and Andrea was right here on this run. So if Peg's there and Andrea, that's kind of how we work. 
Uh, I was looking at the peacocks. There's one peacock in the library, and there's another peacock out in the front room. That uh, I had heard that the peacocks were over at the Flower Memorial Library for a time, but we have them. So I went to read the placard, okay, and then I, I 180'd. The group's still all at the table. Ryan, can I have you stand up? Okay. <laughs> so from my best beeline, from my angle of the table, I'm walking back to the table, and I see, turn around real quick, could you? All right. So if you can imagine, if you can imagine my participant, Ryan, who's also on the board right here. Uh, if you can imagine, so I, I didn't actually get the, it could have just been a guy dressed up, but it, it appeared to be, I only got this much, the, from here to the back. So if you can imagine from here to the, turn, show him the side, Ryan. All right. So you get what I'm saying. So I did not see a face. I saw the, the a side of a woman in sort of Victorian era dressing, and she was just walking that way. And again, no face, but Andrea saw my thing. I just, I went and I walked up half the table just into this room to confirm that nobody was here. You can sit down. Thank you. So I'm round of applause for Ryan. Round of applause. What's that? A cemetery meeting, which we had last weekend. If some of you were there, thank you. Um, if not, next year. You owe us one. Just one, though. Um, where was I at? So that's basically the end of that story I saw. I have Ryan there walking that way. And some lovely, not this era dress. So, um, and then this, uh, the first story that I would have from the Historical Society, about 2016 or 17, I was part of a, uh, a small ghost hunt here, and so I spent the majority of my time walking around the house with a spirit box. There was one area in particular upstairs. At the time, we had some Native American artifacts um, in the building, which are no longer here. Um, but there's this one area where it seemed to be awfully chatty, so I was writing the things down, and uh, I've been meaning to look for this, can't find it, but in the short what I've gotten at, and Tony, you're here, right? Okay. So in the short, what I was, some questions that I was asking and the words that were being spit out of the spirit box, uh, more or less tell me that there is some, I'm not going to say cash, but somebody's buried here on the property um, is, is kind of my takeaway on that. And so it sort of with the words it was saying, pinpointing me to a direction outside. Uh, I can't tell you just in case, because I want to look into this later. But um, Tony came up to me last week and said, you know, I've been thinking, you know, there's a well on the property. And did you tell your well story? I did not. You want to tell the well story? I'll tell After you. this? Okay. So Tony can fill you in on that. But yeah, so there is a sad story. Of, uh, uh, what am I trying to say? Just around a well. It's a story about a well. Um, and, uh, yeah, so who knows? Maybe those two are one in the same. Um, but, yeah, so fingers crossed, maybe with some ground-penetrating sonar or whatnot, we could look at it. But, yeah, so from the things I heard that night in the little spirit box session and then that little fun fact that Tony reminded me of, I do think something unique, whether it be a person or, I, again, I don't think it's any kind of treasure, but there could be, like, a not-so-nice burial on this ground you know when it wasn't anticipated could very well be a dog but who knows so all right that's it thank you i got called back in yeah so we uh wpbs was here last weekend doing a screening of uh folklore and frost uh, we had the screen in here, uh, the crowd was out here, and uh, at showtime, Tony and I uh, took turns turning off the lights. I went out here, and I turned off the lights, I don't know if there's a switch right here, but uh, turning off the hall lights here, when I did that, there's a light that is, I don't know, essentially like right about here, that when I turn those lights off, this one light comes on, or, excuse me, I don't know if it was on to begin with, here's where it gets dicey for me. All I see is it goes off, and then it comes back on, holds it a couple seconds, goes off again, and then it comes on, and it does this three times, and then it comes on and just stays. 
And then so I stand out there for like the next 10 minutes just watching to see what the light was going to do. But so then nothing goes later. Did you have anything after that? I, you know, so. Yeah, so I don't know what that light's about, and I didn't go upstairs to check it out because uh, we have it. We have it roped off, so that means no. <laughs> Anything, any, mom? Anybody can watch. No, okay. <laughs> you want a UFO story, and then unless anybody else has a story, I will. Uh... Thank you. All right. Okay, so this will be the uh, UFO story, and I'm not saying aliens. I don't. I've never. You know they're real now. The government. They are admitted. It just left and right. What's that? (laughs) Yep. Yep. Right. And like, well, like the most. When was that photo published? Really, it was. This year, right? Okay. I saw, I've seen this image years ago. I can't explain that. That's neither here nor there. All right. So this story goes back to... Yeah. I don't know, but I, 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 saw, I saw it scrolling Facebook, but this was years ago. It wasn't recent. All of a sudden, I was like, why is everybody freaking out about this thing? Like, this is old news. <laughs> to me, it was old news. And again, not recent, like years ago. Either way. All right, where was it? So about, I, I've uh, been talking with a friend on this, trying to line it up with when it happened. So it was either the, it was about August of 99 or the year 2000. Uh, I believe it was the Lyric Theater. They did a production of the uh, Little Shop of Horrors. If anybody caught it that year, it was fantastic. Uh, I was, depending on when it was, I was... Uh, 14 or 15 years old, because it was just before I was driving. Now, my father had picked myself and a young date up uh, right here at the Dallas State Office building. We drove up. We dropped my friend off on Ward Street. We get over to Gotham Street, and we make a right-hand turn on Gotham Street to go driving up uh, the park there. Um, well, all of a sudden, my father was just looking out. What the hell was that? So he parks right in front of uh, one of my best friend's house. And for the life of me, I, I don't know why I never knocked on his door. Um, my dad and I stepped out of the truck. This was the first time I ever swore in front of, like, legit swore. I, I stepped out of the truck, I looked up, and I said, what the f- is that? <laughs> um, because what I was looking at, and then, so I didn't knock on my friend's door, but there was a people, remember Josh Stewart? Yeah? yeah. All right, so Josh Stewart and his family were here. There was a good 15 people hanging out right here, and this must have been 9, 30, 10 o'clock at night. Now, I don't want to explain the the shape. It was a circle, and and the light pad, you know, if you've seen this come up to me later, like, I saw that to explain the lights to me, I'll be like, cool, let's chit chat, because this is all I got. But this thing was going at a, an extremely slow clip into the bar. It was just basically there and not far above the trees at all, and just Compared to us, it just was very just right there and just slow movement. So we stood there for, I don't know, a good five minutes watching it. And then my dad says, well, probably going for a job. So we jumped in the car. We drove up to where Fast Track as it used to be a mobile station. And we sat there and we stayed for a couple minutes. But absolutely nothing came out of the park. So my takeaways on this are that. Like, I'm pissed that my dad left the situation (laughs) to go look on the other end, because it didn't come out of Thompson Park, but as I'm sure all you know, like they say, the Area 51, the Vortex. Uh, um, who the hell knows on that? But I remember just this, and it wasn't this, but you can explain the lights to me if you've seen it, because um, I won't forget that. But yeah, so that was just slow tick, and he made me leave the situation. And then again, why the hell didn't I knock on my one of my best buddies' door who nags me to this day just about, hey, can you like come go to my house or just check out my kids' room or whatever? I was like, sure, buddy. And no one else wants to hear an alien story. That was like what we did for fun. Why didn't I knock on his door? And this was way too real to be a dream. Like I, I've had some of this. I can remember that. Again, I just can't pinpoint exactly the year because the Lyric Theater can't determine if it was whatever. It was right after that show, though, which was awesome. 
Um, and so I do believe that's the ending of my UFO story. <laughs> yeah. All right. I am uh, 39 and a half years old. Okay, so my brother yeah. has a similar story. Yeah. He's he's way older than me. Right. He's 50-something, but he was in his 20s at the time. Or a very similar. I wonder yeah. if it's the same night. I, I mean, it was, I, it was. It was just so, it was just so circular and dark underneath. And again, I'm not going to explain the rest of the lights to you, but... It was there in completely and utter blackness, and not a noise in the air. And it was... Yeah, he said it was slow moving, then all of a sudden it fast moved away. But he and that was driving. Would have been the case. Yeah, but... he was driving and he stopped and watched it, just like hover. Yeah, and yeah. why? Like, I, I tell a story like probably at least once a year, just to see if I can arouse anybody and be like, you know what. Yeah, I did have a friend years ago that said he lived down in Myrtle Lab, claims to have seen the thing. I don't know if I can trust him unless or not, but I want to. <laughs> that damn West, though. Um, he's not here to defend himself. So, um, but yeah, I, I, I'd always love to. But I, I do think there is a very powerful force that is Thompson Park within the general scheme and more than we'll ever fathom. But. What that is, I'm sure will, you know, not be seen for a, a good long while. But I do think it is a, a cool area of some mysticism. I think there's some. I think spend more time in the park. It would be my uh, instruction on that. And I think that's uh, I don't know something to be said on Thompson Park. Yeah, yeah. for sure. We want to do. We want to do a like a live recording at Thompson Park. We thought that'd be kind of cool to do. Have a bunch of people meet and like go into the vortex and everything. Yeah, that'd be cool. Anyone else have anything they want to share? Oh, great. Okay. All right. That was fun. That was fun. <laughs> Unfortunately, you have to listen to this guess, but <laughs> when we were in college, the Royal We, my husband's here, our first appointment. Oh, to yourself, oh, you got it. The first apartment that we lived in together was a rickety old house um, on West Utica Street in Buffalo. <laughs> um, and it was a haunted house. Our downstairs neighbor had a lot more uh, supernatural activity than we had, but we did have two very specific instances of hauntings. One was uh, we were dead asleep one night, and Jack sat straight up in bed. and was like, what are you doing here? What are you doing? What are you doing here? And I was like, what? What's wrong? What's happening? He goes, there's a man at the end of our bed dressed in an ape costume. <laughs> and I was like, there's nobody there, babe. And he was like, no, there was someone just standing at the end of our bed watching us sleep. He still to this day thinks there was there was Chewbacca. Obviously an ape costume. I never saw it, but I was frightened because he was yelling in the middle of the night at, at an ape man. The other thing happened to our roommate and what he, so we had already gone to bed. He was in the living room watching TV and he said that he heard Jack's computer chair move. And you know, the house was kind of slanted. So sometimes things moved just because the house was slanted. So he didn't think anything of it at first, but then he heard a dragging noise and he got up no mice, no nothing like that. No critters doing it. The chair was moved and the surge protector with all of the plugs in it was pulled all the way out. He was so scared. He went in his room and shut the door, left the TV on, left all the lights on, <laughs> didn't bother to tell us. <laughs> and he went directly to bed. So I actually never saw any ghosts in that house, but I did feel very scared. Um, and I hated being all by myself in there. Um, I've never seen an apparition and I hope to one day make contact with one. I'll probably be scared for the rest of my life, but yeah. it's okay. Dolls. The dolls, I though. They're creepy. They're nope. super creepy. Mom moved just so we're clear. She texted me upstairs like, yeah. <laughs> Save me from myself. I <laughs> did call for help on that. Uh, one more story about the mansion. 
we just did a Victorian craft fair here in September. Um, and this woman just walked up to me. I was at the admissions desk outside and she just walked up to me and said, did you guys have a costume party in March at the mansion? And I was like, well, no, we were closed to the public. And she started to cry. You You were, you were. And it might be scared. She began to cry when you confirmed that no, you had no such party going on. The the shock horror that took over this woman was really just fascinating. She saw a Victorian woman upstairs in Olive Paddock's bedroom just staring out at her from the window in March. And she was like, Apparently, she must have some sort of sensitivity because she said that this type of thing happens to her often, and she hates it. She doesn't want that skill, so it scares her. So I thought that was really, I mean, we were both, we both felt really bad for her, but we were like. She could have let TV-wise her dog at the door and I would have walked her around the mansion, but she would not come in. Yeah, she said, I can't come in there. I don't feel comfortable. But also, like, tap into that. Yeah, you're welcome. So I want to thank every single one of you for coming out tonight and supporting the Historical Society. We appreciate you being here. I appreciate all of you brave souls who stood up and told a story because it's not easy to come up into a room full of strangers and talk to them. I appreciate especially Colleen and Margaret for being here and the Cousins Weird podcast. And if you, fo- if you follow their podcast, you will know when this is uh, uploaded. And even though you heard it all tonight, you can hear it again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And subscribe because they have a lot of awesome other tales. Um, and I, all the back episodes are available as well. So you can get all caught up on all the cool stuff that they offer and talk about. It's helped me learn a lot about things. Like, again, the wooden bathing suits. Who would have thought? I assume it was... What, like for life-saving measures? Because they would float in them? They're slightly bleeding, yes. Yes. Yeah. I'm not sure what that would feel like against my lady parts, but... <laughs> it's all about fashion. Not a good place to get a splinter. <laughs> so... Uh, be safe tonight, and thanks again for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much to everyone that allowed us to record their ghost stories for this episode. Um, It was such a fun night. And if you get a chance to come next year, I'm sure they'll have another Holland Happy Hour at the Historical Society. You should definitely do that. It was a really fun night. If you want to follow us on Facebook and Instagram, it's the Cousins Weird Podcast. Make sure you uh, go in there and like our pages and follow us because we post pictures from our episodes. We're going to try to scrounge up some pictures um, to share with you from the Historical Society. They had a cool display uh, going on of uh, Victorian funeral traditions and rites, which was really cool. That's going on right now, so go check them out. Make sure you go to the, to, over to the Flower Memorial Library and check out their vintage doll collection in the basement. Maybe one will jump off the shelf for you, too. But we're going to share some pictures on those pages from our episodes. And you'll always know when an episode is released because we share them on there and make sure to share the episode with your friends on social media. You also can support our our podcast by um, word of mouth, obviously, and patreon.com backslash the cousins weird for a dollar a month, become a freaky friend and you get a free sticker and bonus content. And then for $5 a month, become a terrible trender. That will get you bonus content, a free sticker, a yearly gift, and a quarterly video chat with yours truly, my cousin's weird. And we'll just chat about weird stuff. And if you have any ideas for a future episode or you want to share your ghost stories with us so we can share them on the podcast, reach out to us at thecousinsweird at gmail.com. I didn't say it as cool as Margaret did, but that's okay. I hope you guys have a fantastic Halloween. It's my favorite night of the year. Make sure you light your candles, light up those jack-o'-lanterns, hand out lots of candy, and talk to your ancestors tonight. All right, that's a wrap. Stay freaky, friends. Bye!